Hi there, another fireside chat with Dr. Fire. It's me coming up again. Like I said earlier, I just turned it back on. I was going to talk about speculation this time. I never even said what date it was. Today is uh, November 16, 2021. And it was November 16, 2021 when I made the earlier video. I just, uh, coming on now to do the, uh, speculations I talked about. I think, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, the fact that all, like, like I said, all I can do is speculate when you don't talk and come up with, uh, rationale for doing a certain thing and coming together and understanding what the heck was going on. All you can do is speculate. Ain't no reason for us to come together. I could never get in the same, uh, I never want to get ever in the same room with them people who try and breathe the same air. The best thing for us, as I know, uh, is to each stay clear of each other's existence. We have nothing of value to offer each other. Nothing but more calamity. And I, <laughs> at this point in my life, like I said, I ain't got nothing to lose. My children are grown. And so you might just want to take out an insect. <laughs> To take out an insect uh, for sport. So uh, the best thing to do is steer clear of each other's existence. Um, but uh, because uh, there's just been such, such calamity in our family. And it has to do with the, the matriarch uh, having enough disdain for me. That she want to go against her own tenets, her own faith. And uh, give bad counsel to her one and only son. That I think is just worth coming to you all and let you, at least let you know what I think may have happened. Now, you all are in them people's face, and y'all, they've been in your face for 20 years. You might want to talk to them, find out what the, what they're, from their perspective. But speaking from my perspective, I guess the only thing I can say is, uh, um, I think, um, uh, because when I was dating your dad, I had no problem with the matriarch. When we were engaged, I had no problem with the matriarch. It seemed like it was after we got married that the woman wanted to put her, her big foot, <laughs> put her little big foot in the middle of our holy matrimony. I don't know why that was, but my only speculation is, you know, once the baby was born, you know, cute, the firstborn, these people travel the highways and byways of the United States inter interstate to get from, <laughs> so from all the way from South Carolina to come to Texas. So they came to Texas, and, you know, I had my little house over there, and they came, stayed with me, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that may have been where the trouble began. Because, you know, the people came to show up in, in, uh, in, in Texas, and <laughs> I don't know what their expectation was. No one ever told me what their expectation was. And I think the Southerners, maybe them Southern people, have a certain kind of way about them. You know, they want you, when they got family coming, they want the big feast. You know, they want you in the kitchen rattling pots and pans and making big meals for the family. And nobody expecting to go out to eat. <laughs> nobody expecting to go out to eat. They want you rattling pots and pans and making the big meal at home. I would have been glad to do that. I come from a family. We always had big holidays, you know, like Christmases and, and the Easter and all this. Always, up all night, you know, making the ham and making the turkey, chopping up the season, and do all that. So you bring the sun up. You The sun would come up and you you making this big meal and stuff like that. So I got no problem with that. But see, what I didn't know <laughs> if that, that, that fat was expected of me. We got family coming in. And so the southern people, the people from South Carolina, expect me to be making pot, rattling pots and pans and making the big meal for them. I didn't know this until post facto. Reggie told me that his mom and them expected me to uh, make a big meal. They didn't expect to go, <laughs> to go out to eat. You know, after Q's christening, you know, we... Am I calling the right to christening? That's the same as dedication. You know, we had the dedication. Everybody come in, we go to the front of church, dedicate the baby, and then you're supposed to all sit down and eat and have the feast. But we all went out to eat. Papa, Papa, Papa Do's, I think is where we went. <laughs> a seafood place and all that. Kind of. And then later on, I found out that my mom and I felt some kind of way about going out to eat <laughs> instead of having me cook the meal at home. Well, I'm a career woman. I'm off. I'm on my maternity leave and all this other kind of stuff, and, and I'm off. So I didn't know that they expected me to cook. I could have cooked. I ain't had no problem with that. Elizabeth could have said, well, we, we got let's go on out to the store. Let's get some food so we can make the big meal. 
I'd have been more than happy to do it. But ain't nobody told me nothing. These people expect you to read their minds. So I think that was the first problem that she had with me. That I wasn't acting like a southern girl. Like I wasn't out here rattling pots and pans and making a big meal for the for the family. My my parents were there too, my mom and dad. But they ain't expecting me to be you know, rattling no pots and pans, even though they know I ain't had no problem with it. But cause, you know they raised me, of course, so I wouldn't have no problem with it. But they weren't expecting me to do that. But <laughs> but the southern folks, the folks from down south, and then I guess the other thing is, you know, when you from down, when them southern people, I guess what they expect is for you to bow down and kiss feet. Now, see, my mother, the girl, the woman <laughs> told me, which is all well and good, you can call me mom. I know I can call you mom, but I got to work up to that. I'm not the type, my mom is alive and well. I never in my life, at this time I'm like 30 years old probably, well, I, mean, I can't do the math, but I'm, I'm probably 30 or more, 31, 30, 31, 32, whatever, whatever age, <laughs> whatever age I was in 1997 when she was born. So she tell me I can call her mom. And I ain't never in my life ever called anybody mom except my own mom. And I ain't got no problem with it, but I do know you got to work up to that. You, you can't be opening your mouth. Me, I can't just be opening my mouth, calling people mom, just because they tell me I can call them mom. So I think she might take offense to the fact that I wasn't calling her mom. And like I said, you work up to that. I ain't never called anybody dad either. But guess what? When my dad died, my client, my client had a dad who was like, he was like 80, 75, 80 years old. And I felt very comfortable calling him dad because it was good to say dad when my dad was dead. You know, my dad was no longer with us. He would pass. And so to be able to say dad and uh, have somebody respond to that was all good. And I even asked my client, I said, you know, do, do, do you take offense to me calling your dad dad instead of calling him Mr. whatever his last name was or calling him Mr. by his first name? She said, no, 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 that's all well and good. You go right ahead. And I said, like, good. So I got her permission. And dad didn't mind me calling him dad. So I did that. You work up to that. You, and my dad used to say, my dad used to say, trust is earned, not freely given. So, you know, you earn people's trust. So the same thing here. You earn the right for me to be calling you mom. I appreciate the fact that you give me that opening, that opportunity, and welcome me to do it. But let me work up to it at my own pace. So I think that, too, had a problem. She, she took some exception to that. See what I'm saying? These people are very, very superficial. They're very shallow. That's not something that should be earth shattering. That's the, that's not something that should destroy. That you're willing to destroy your children, your grandchildren's future over because some do some woman that you don't even know don't want to call you mom at this point in your life. You just met the woman. <laughs> She ain't never said that when I was her 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 her, her son's girlfriend. He never said that when I was her son's fiance. It was when we got when we got married, and once we had our babies and stuff, she opened that door. So I wouldn't have did it then either. You you work up to that. That's something that that you come to do. But anyway, so I think that's another reason the woman had issues with me. So I think that like as a southern girl, if I had been a southern southern belle. <laughs> maybe I would have known that I'm supposed to, uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to treat this woman some other kind of way. <laughs> you know, I'm just in the habit of just being respectful to everybody. But I don't, I'm not in the habit of, like, uh, what they call that woman uh, that used to be Archie Bunkering, you know, that Edith Bunker. I'm not Edith Bunkering around anybody. I'm not the type of person that just, just, just Archie. <laughs> it is a me is. All the I don't even know. I just know that I'm me. You can't take me from being me. I gotta be who I am. So I think that people took exception to the fact that I ain't go down, bow down, kiss feet. And uh, I wasn't uh, the southern belle that I was supposed to be. I wasn't in the kitchen rattling pots and pans to make the big meal for the people on the big <laughs> on the big day. Though so I would not have mind. All somebody had to do was tell me. All somebody had to do is tell me that that, that is what was expected of me. You ready to control me in advance. My mom and them gonna be coming down. We used to having the big big meals and stuff. So you make sure that we we you know we go out there and get some food and make sure we make the big meal. Cause my mama gonna be wanting to be in the kitchen rattling pots and pans so we can make the big meal. 
I'd have been all down with it. But when you don't know, you don't know. And so now they won't hold it against you. That's all I can say. And then as far as my, Reggie, I've been known him like three years. Yeah, we were dating for a year, engaged for a year, and then we got married. That word, uh, a restraining order, never came up. But he was a doctor. He don't know nothing about going out here, coming up with the idea to get a restraining order against your wife. Not your girlfriend, not your fiancé, not your booty call. This is your wife. So me, I believe that when I wanted to take the kids to San Antonio on a business trip, I was I had to go to the advanced office, of course. It was six to eight weeks. I don't remember which. But it was six to eight weeks. So I'm taking the kids with me because I'm the nurturer. He's the provider. That's the way I see it. So I'm the one who are out here taking care of the kids. So I'm going to make arrangements for the kids to come to San Antonio. And not only that, I was in San Antonio a good chunk of my life. I've been in San Antonio since 1985. And so when I'm in San Antonio and doing all the things that I do in San Antonio, because San Antonio, beautiful city, got lots to do. And so I'm free single, free single disengaged, going to school and all that kind of stuff, but still I make time to enjoy the state. You know, you're going down to the River Rock, Fiesta, Texas, SeaWorld, Slitterbond, Splash Town, all this, going to the museums, and all that, and all I'm saying, and skating, ice skating, roller skating, all that stuff. And I was like, you know, when I had my kids, I would love to take them out here to the Fiesta, Texas, and to the SeaWorld, and all this, and that. That's what you said when you're free, single, disengaged, and got no kids. You're doing all this stuff by yourself. See, I ain't, I ain't scared to do stuff by myself. I ain't gonna be sitting at home twiddling my thumb and saying, uh, 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 you know, oh, I sure wish I had somebody to take me this place or that. I'm getting out here to take my own darn self to these places. So I'm doing all this and I'm thinking how beautiful it would be to have kids and be able to take them to these things. So guess what? In 1990, what was that time I went to the advanced office? Of course? Oh, it was, it, was, it was a 911. It was 2001. I went out there to the advanced office, of course. 2001. Well, that's where I was when, when these people ran into the uh, World Trade Center. So now I got kids. I'm going to San Antonio. So what do I do? I'm taking my kids with me. And I made arrangements. I got the corporate suite. I found out where they were going to go to school at. And then my sister was coming down. She broke a leg. <laughs> she was in a tree doing some stuff at her house. Trying to fix. What is it? Some kind of take out some branches. <laughs> take out some branches at a tree in her house. <laughs> and she fell down and Broke a leg or something, some poor thing. Yeah, but but anyway, so guess what? Now open opened the opportunity for her to be able to come down to San Antonio and take care of the kids and bring her two kids while I'm down there in the advance office, of course. Now, if I hadn't taken the kids to San Antonio, she'd have been more than happy to stay with the kids and clean with Reggie and all that. But I'm taking them to San Antonio. So, guess what? The man say, if I take the kids to San Antonio, he gonna get, he gonna, uh, he gonna, um, divorce me. And so, he told me that he gonna get a restraining order to take, to, to keep me. He gonna get a restraining order to keep me from taking the kids to San Antonio. Now, guess what? I gotta speculate. <laughs> His one and only sister was a law school dropout. So, guess where I get, <laughs> I think he getting his legal advice from. I think the, the, the sibling, his younger sibling, three years younger than him, one and only sibling, only two of them, the one and only sibling going to advise this man, like they say, you're only as wise as the <laughs> counsel around you. So the one and only sibling going to advise him to get a restraining order against his wife. Not his girlfriend, not the booty call, not the, not the, uh, what, the girlfriend, the booty call, or the ex-wife, none of that. I was his wife at the time. So, now, I'm, I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm only speculating here. I'm just assuming that was the law school dropout who gave him his wise counsel to give him his legal advice to, to get the strain in order to keep me from taking the kids to San Antonio. Now, it could be wrong. It could be his mama. His mama was a social worker. That was her profession. So, she knew all about restraining orders and all these guys. I ain't know none of this. This is all new to me. I ain't never had to deal with the, with the social workers or, or, or restraining orders or family court. None of that. None of that wasn't me. So, anyway, so I'm assuming it was a sibling, but it could have been, it could have been a mama. But somebody advised him because I know, I don't think Reggie would have came up with that on his own. But he going to get a restraining order. That's what he tell me. So, Reggie, lip service, he going to tell me what he going to do. Well, guess what I'm going to do? Before you do what you telling me you going to do, I'm going to go and get it done. 
So I went to the lawyer, and I don't know nothing about this. Like I say, the word restraining order ain't never came out of my mouth. I ain't never knew what a restraining order was. But it's not for me to know. I, that's why you pay the lawyer. You pay the lawyer to do what you need them to do to make sure that you can bring the kids to San Antonio. So the lawyer did what he needed to do to make sure I could bring the kids to San Antonio. So that's what I did. And so we went to San Antonio. We had that good time and all that kind of stuff. Enjoyed that summer. And the boys had the camp. They were in summer camp. I had them in the, I, we were in the corporate suite. And my sister was there taking care of them. So anyway, that, the speculation is that the, the sibling or the mama gave him the wise counsel to, to, to tell him to get a restraining order against me. And the other speculation was that mama had an issue with me because uh, I wasn't the bow down kids feed. I didn't make the big meal and I wasn't the southern belle that I was supposed to be. Now, I could have been all of that, but you know, you got to tell me. <laughs> You got to tell me something, because other than that, all I can do is just be me. I ain't no problem with me just being me. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, I guess that's all I had to say about that. I guess within 10 minutes, whoop, 16 minutes, <laughs> 16 minutes, I guess this is the shortest one that I made yet. Um, but uh, all I can do, I don't know what else I can talk about on this thing. Uh, oh. Um, I was I wrote down here about those uh, the act of Congress. You know, like I say, the black people because we can't stay out of our own way. We can't progress up the the ladder because we keep uh, keeping ourselves and we can't get out of our own way. We keep keeping ourselves from advancing because of the things we do to each other. And so, like here, all these people, all this stuff that went down with Reggie and our family and all that, everybody had a lawyer. Elizabeth had a lawyer, I had a lawyer, Reggie had a lawyer, and, you know, we all paying these lawyers. You know, you're doing all that. I pay mine $15,000. I'm sure Reggie pay his, but it's about the same, and Elizabeth probably pay hers the same. But we all got lawyers, and so what we doing is we taking all that money and giving it to the Caucasians. They're Caucasian lawyers. Well, I had Caucasian lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> and so those people take their little money that we giving them, and then they send their kids to college. They paying for things that is important to them. Like, for instance, maybe they got an auntie or an uncle or grandparent who uh, was responsible and helped them elevate them to the level they are. And they want to honor them people in some way. So what, they going to probably get a scholarship or a foundation or something in honor of those people. They're giving money to their church. They're doing all these things to build the community and spend this money in a positive way that elevates them and elevates their kids. But what we doing is putting all this money out to take advantages from our young. We all this money spent to destroy these children's future. Now, how does that make sense? That's why we can't get in the boardroom. And so then, when I wrote this down here about the uh, we can't we gotta take acts of Congress to tell us how we can wear our hair in the workplace. Now, you see, if we were doing what we were supposed to do, keep elevating ourselves and advancing ourselves and get from the margins of society, we wouldn't have to have acts of Congress telling us that we can wear our hair in braids in the workplace and telling us that, you know, tell, the work, tell people not to be putting your hands in your hair to respect your boundaries and don't be touching your braids. <laughs> Stuff like that. Why? Because we would be in the boardroom. We'd be on the 30th floor in the corner office making these decisions and writing these memos and saying that it's okay to wear braids in the hair in the workplace. And that uh, giving people uh, wise counsel about boundaries and stuff. Don't go put your hands in anybody's hair without getting their permission. Because, you know, people go on TV, complain. I don't know how true it is. Anybody ever put their hand in my hair? Uh, but I don't wear braids. But uh, <laughs> I used to. I did when I was in, in the military. I used to wear them, go get my hair braided. And people used to come to the house and braid my hair and stuff like that. Even when I was in Germany, I used to go get my hair braided. Couldn't, couldn't go to the salons in Germany. Uh, you need to go to the people that was working on posts and get your hair done. Because them people, them, them, them folks didn't know how to do black hair. Girl, them people put your mess, your mess up. Like that time. Like the time when I went over there, they put that lie, you know, go get your hair, uh, go get your hair, uh, perm. <laughs> and the Germany coming in me, them people put that lie, lie perm in my hair. My hair was falling out for days. 
if not weeks, probably falling out for weeks. I had to go to the salon. The people tell me to put, uh, put, put, put protein in my hair. I had to put eggs in my mayonnaise, eggs and mayonnaise in my hair to try and get my hair strengthened because they had put that lie in my hair and had my hair falling out. But you learn, live and learn. So when I went back to Germany that second time, um, I ain't, I ain't go to the Germany kind to get my hair done. You find the people who's on post that was doing hair, and you went to get your hair done there. Or they come to your house and do it either way. But I don't know why I was talking about that, but, uh, I don't know why I was talking about the hair and the perm and the German. Anyway, it, <laughs> I, um, um, well, I was just talking about the acts of Congress. And that. Yeah, so basically, I don't know. That's all I had to say about that. I just wanted the speculation. And uh, the people can't get to, to stay out of their own way. So I think at 20 minutes, I'm going to turn this off because it, it, it uh, I ain't got nothing else to say. Um, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, ah, but anyway, going on, going on, turn it off.